we're going to look at the different hats you wear and the different roles you play and when you might need to switch between them. Now we've got a simple model for setting up balanced conversations that we're going to share with you a little later. And we're going to give you quite a bit of time today to practice in groups how you can maybe plot some of this stuff out, how it might work for you. Now we've selected two of these hats that we're going to dig a little bit deeper into. And we're going to share our thoughts and ideas on how to create more intent-based teams of people. So let's just step back a little bit though at that trolley dilemma and this ongoing battle between reason and emotion. Now, hopefully you're not faced with such an extreme decision as to uh, that, that they had to make in, in that uh, exercise. But we can guarantee that the neocortex part of the brain and the, the sort of limbic system, uh, they're constantly having some pretty interesting debates that, that might deem to be more every normal day events. So let's take feedback as an example. You know, even the word can sometimes create this real emotional reaction. Sometimes we remember you know, giving feedback, receiving feedback, the way it made us feel. You know, but how many times do we choose not to give it? You know, often we know it's the right thing to do. And as we sit here now, we, we can feel pretty confident in saying, yeah, I'm going to deliver some feedback next time I see this person. And you know, I can logically plan out the words I'm going to say or the things I'm going to do. I can even think about the scenario maybe that I'm in uh, as I'm going to be uh, getting around to, to giving the feedback. Yeah, I could even decide I might write it on an email. However, when I'm sat in front of someone, when I'm in the room, when I can see them, I can hear them, I can talk to them, reasoning seems to ebb away a little bit. And the emotional part of the brain takes more control. So it becomes less easy to give that feedback. And sometimes we don't. So I just want you to take a few seconds just to reflect on a couple of questions you're gonna see on screen now. Maybe write down some thoughts that you've got on a piece of paper close to hand. And we might just ask you to pop a few things in the chat just to give us an idea of some of the things you're thinking. So firstly, I just want you to think of a time when you did give feedback to someone. Sorry, when you didn't give feedback to someone. Uh, and what was the impact of that? You know, how did it feel to you? And then uh, adverse to that, think of a time when you did give someone feedback. Again, how did it feel? What was the impact? How did it feel to the other person? So if you don't mind just jotting a few things down, if you want to include some things in the chat, uh, and uh, I'll sort of pull some of the ones out uh, that, uh, uh, that we can maybe have a little chat about. So just give you a couple of seconds on that one. Give you a few more seconds just to see if anyone does want to share anything uh, that springs to mind about this, whether you've ever been in this situation, you know, what you decided to do or not. Here we go. Uh, so to give feedback feels empowering. Thank you to Peter. Ellen, Ellen said it, I, it felt like taking the easy option out not to give it rather than have a challenging conversation which might improve their work. Thank you for that, Ellen. So true, isn't it? You know, we do... We can often do that. It just feels a bit easier just to overlook it. Hopefully it'll go away or it'll, it'll fix yeah. it. As opposed to uh, you know, trying to head, head it on. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So, so Pam says when you don't give feedback results in you feeling less empowered. Yeah. So thank you, Pam. Uh, and less effective. Thank you. Yeah. Um, for sure. Yeah, there's some great stuff coming through there, and you know, feel free to carry on adding them in. But we're now just going to explore this topic a little bit further. So we're going to set you off into the uh, your first sort of Zoom rooms, uh, where we're going to give you the chance to talk about this together. So to get the opportunity just to share some of your own stories, some of your own experiences, and listen to uh, those of others. So in a second, we're going to pop you off into groups of around three or four, depending on numbers really think about how you feel when receiving or giving feedback then try and think about that the specific thoughts and feelings you have you know and how these best serve you um you know ask each other questions get a little bit deeper into the conversation um you know, discuss some of the impacts that it's having and after around 10 minutes or so you'll hopefully have all had the chance to sort of share your own thoughts on this and then you'll be brought back into the room automatically so you don't need to leave anywhere or press anything you'll you'll get brought back in after around uh, 10 minutes or so. So Anna, are we ready to pop in? Yeah, into yeah, I'll just pop it in for, um, I'll put it in for 10 minutes then, Stu, yeah? Okay, all right, so um, 
we we'll just send you off into your rooms now. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I love um, I love it. After as soon as you come back from a breakout room, your camera is automatically default to being back on, and I get this sort of sudden uh, vision of everyone's face, and then everyone quickly hits the camera <laughs> off. And, but I did see you all for like a half a second, so at least I know people are really there. Um, hope you found that sort of session useful. Um, not only is it a great opportunity to share some. Uh, of your own experiences, but actually just to connect with other people who might be in a similar situation to you. And we'd always encourage you to try and connect with each other after this call, you know, to to, uh, to create these connections and to maybe even uh, talk about this type of subject again uh, with those same type of people. And um, it'd be great just to get a bit of feedback from anyone. So anyone want to either feel confident to open the mic uh, and talk a little bit about what they experienced during that, or uh, again, put something in the chat um, and it'd be good just to sort of you know, get a couple of little bits if anyone feels up for that. Come on, I'll speak. <laughs> Excellent. So I was just, um, we were talking about how the default view with feedback is that it's negative. And actually, we were saying that sometimes if you're in an organisation that doesn't confidently give feedback, you lose all the positive feedback as well. So we were talking about, you know, the sort of maybe people who are new to an organisation or new to a team. If the default position is nobody really gives feedback, you don't encourage the positive behaviours either. So, um, sorry, he lost a train of thought there. So, um, yeah, so it just it just loses all of that that side as well. So we were saying it's quite difficult to give negative feedback, but nicer to give positive. But you almost need to be an organisation that does both. Um, yeah, love, love that, Claire. I mean, just as a general, do, do, do people give positive feedback in the same way? You know, do you feel as confident and uh, in just seeing something, observing it, and then going and giving some feedback to people? I think positive, I find quite easy. I think negative, or where you've maybe got quite a challenging team member, you really, or maybe I just have to really think about how to approach it because you can make things a lot worse if you're not really careful um and yeah. I, I think the thing i've noticed at the minute is the organization i work with working currently isn't very feedback positive i've worked in other organizations where it's almost forced so i was saying i worked in financial services and it was compulsory you every quarter you had to give feedback on a certain number of people above you below you your peers and it had to be constructive and it had to be positive and opportunities for improvement and that was quite challenging to begin with but once you got into the swing of it it just became the norm and you could sort of nip poor behaviors in the bud um and it was quite a healthy approach but it's the cu culture of the company i think that drives that at the minute i'm in quite a hierarchical company and you know your place a little bit <laughs> so you know you couldn't go and shoulder tap someone quite senior and say oh I've, you know I, I think that was quite a confusing session or i found that quite difficult to understand they'd be like well who are you to, <laughs> to yeah. give that feedback so uh, that that was my personal opinion so yeah no thank you for sharing that and that sounds sound like a a sort of slightly ch challenging dilemma you've got there but um, hey happy to catch up sort of separately if you want to talk through any of that we can we can sort of work through it um but yeah look i think you know do people want feedback do people need feedback you know may, maybe not the people value feedback you know typically they do so the word value is really important because if we have the mindset of feedback is about helping people grow helping people to improve helping people do things better then it can certainly have a more positive impact on the individual and ourselves whether the feedback itself in its nature is positive or not so I'm just gonna gonna move us on. Um, just before we get into the next topic, and I hand over to Anne to look at the this three hats. I thought it'd be worth just introducing you to Sarah. Okay, and Sarah is such a great way of understanding how we might feel when receiving feedback. So there can be this initial shock, you know, this bit of surprise about when we find ourselves getting a feedback, and we sometimes even question the validity of it. You know, we might pass it off as well, they don't quite understand the context or they don't know me, you know, or actually the survey didn't ask the right type of questions. But once that initial feelings pass, we, we often then reflect on the feedback and our emotions can sometimes turn into anger. You know, we start to resent the feedback a little bit. 
And again, it's easy to try and rationalize that feedback. And at that point, you know, we blame other people, we question the source of feedback, you know, we even question the experience or knowledge of the person giving it. And then this third stage, well, that tends to be more about resistance or denial. And, you know, can we sort of explain to ourselves why the feedback might not be relevant to us or we just don't agree with it? And, and that's fine. And I think, Antoinette, you said in the, in the sort of comments, you know, feedback's a luxury, feedback's a gift. You know, we can decide whether we accept it or we decline it. But if you choose to accept it, feedback can provide this real excellent resource for learning and development. And so every situation we find ourselves in, you know, it, it can be a, a way of informing some element of our future and helping us to make positive change. And not all the feedback will be positive. You know, sometimes we don't have to agree with all of it, but just understanding the likely way that we'll receive it and process the information on that emotional level as well can often help us to be better at giving it. So Anne, I'm gonna hand over to you now to take us through the three hats. Hey, thanks. Thanks, Stu. Yes, yeah, so the three hats. So what we're going to talk about in this session is about the three hats that we find ourselves wearing. And uh, the three hats I'm referring to are the three hats around the three roles of leader, coach and manager. Now, um, what we're going to start to look at is where do you spend most of your time? But before we go into that, let's just think about what these three hats you know, stand for in effect, and what does this role entail? So if we see um, sort of manager, coach and leader, um, what sort of, um, I suppose, roles or tasks would it, would you be in? What would you be doing uh, if you were in the manager? If you're wearing your manager hat, what sort of things would you be doing? Just put perhaps just in the chat box, any thoughts on that? What is the manager responsible for, if you like? So in that role. So any thoughts on that as a manager? Oops. So what have we got here coming up? Delegation, delegating and directing. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Alex. Yeah, excellent. Anything else? Organizing resources. Thank you, John. Yeah. So all of those things sort of quite, quite tasky, quite task focused. HR activity, PDR responsibility. Thank you, Pam. Task. Yes, thank you, Pam. Thank you, Alex. Yeah, so it's quite a, a task-based role. It's what we call doing the doing quite often. All right, thank you for that. Let's have a, a look now at, um, at probably the... Oops, let's just put that one in. What about the coach? What is the coach perhaps responsible for? So where's the primary, primary concern then? What are coaches more... Nurturing, thank you, Alex. What else? Encouraging self-reflection. That's nice, Sarah, thank you. Anything else? Developing people and teams. Thank you, John. Yeah. Paul, yeah, developing, making change and results happen. Thank you. Yeah, so it's slightly different. What we're seeing here is a bit more of a, a people focus. Um, and so making change and results happen. Is what you were saying there, Paul. Yeah, so your focus is on developing others. Topics such as personal development and the questions to elicit greater awareness. We talk about awareness and responsibility. So getting people to take, you know, to be more aware of what's going on so they can perhaps take that responsibility to change. So Pam, thank you. Personnel you put in there, thank you. So finally, what about this role as a leader? What are we doing in that leadership role? Strategy. Thank you, Pam. Yeah, leading, Alex. Thank you. Role modelling from Sarah. Thank you. Anything else that is the focus for a leader? Vision. Excellent. Thank you, Carl. Any other, any other thoughts on that? Looking ahead. Yeah, plans, etc. So sort of leading that way ahead. Great. OK, so let's have a quick look then. So leader. Uh, yeah, facilitating change. Thank you, Paul. Yes, yeah, about setting the direction, the culture, emotional connection to motivate others. And as I say here, and what some of you have said, it's about really that vision and the way forward. Uh, championing, that's great. Thank you, Sarah, as, as well. Yeah, facilitating change, which uh, is key right now. So um, what I want to do before we look at, um, look into this in more detail is where do you think 
you are spending most of your time. So I'm just going to launch a poll. So if you had to pick one of those in your role right now, where are you spending most of your time? Um, when we look at the tasks. So just have a moment to look at that. And then I'm just going to launch the poll and get you to vote on that. So, okay. Okay, all right. Okay, let's see what we've got. So let's share those results. So we've got quite a number of you. Yeah, so the highest is 46% of you are spending most of your time in that coaching role, which is good, great, yeah. So um, leader, yep, yeah, 31%. And most of you uh, also, let's have a look, manager is on 23%. So quite a mix, but most of you seem to be in that coaching role at the moment, uh, but a good spread across all of them. So um, what we're talking about here really is, is that coaching and trying to going to look at how can we move more into that coaching space. And quite often when we think about coaching, the reason why um, probably we don't spend as much time as we would like in that coaching space is because it's quite often that time to do it. Um, and a lot of people strive or a lot of managers strive to spend less time actually managing doing the doing and a bit more time in that coaching space because if we can coach people to take more responsibility and empower them to do things for themselves then it gives us more time to lead and set the direction and right now coming out of um, you know lockdown and moving people forward you know people are certainly looking for that that leadership so what we're going to spend a bit of time now is looking at how can we shift and do a little bit more in that coaching space so we can do less of the managing let people do more of the doing and then spend more of our time perhaps leading um, others into uh, the next space really of where we're going to be moving forward so I just want to share with you this model and I'm sure some of you have seen it before it's called the push-pull model and what you can see is over on the left hand side um, is very much around this push style of leadership which is very task um, and directive whereas on the other side the other side of the continuum is more this pull style which is very much more people orientated very much supportive in terms of pulling people um, on their journey uh, somewhere in the middle we've got the participative which is kind of task and people where we've got that mix of both and so what we're going to look at is what style might you use so if we look at that continuum from push to pull what style might you use given different situations um, because it might not always be a push, it might not always be a pull. There may be some different occasions where you might you know, decide to push or pull. So what I'm going to do is just give you a couple of um, examples and ask you to put in the chat box, which you think would be probably the best style to use. So what about if there's um, something like a new health and safety um, process that you need to implement um, and you have to uh, get everyone to follow a new procedure so just in the chat there where might we put that so definitely in the push seems to be very much yeah that kind of push yeah it's a, it's a new uh, criteria it's a bit of it's a it's a definite do you have to do it this way so yeah probably more on that that push instructing telling that side of it okay what about something like where we've uh, perhaps watched somebody give a presentation and we have, we think there's some room for improvement. Where might you sit on that? So you've just observed them giving a presentation, 75% pull. Yeah, participative, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Alex, thank you, Claire. That's great, yeah. Bit of pull there, John, thank you. Yeah, so pretty much more towards that side because we want them to perhaps coach them a little bit more being a bit more that coaching role uh, getting reflecting uh, getting that increasing their awareness um, and yeah helping them pulling them along that's brilliant thank you very much all right what about um maybe someone in a new role and they're coming to you for a bit of advice because you've been in the role so perhaps a bit more of that kind of mentoring role where would you see that yeah paul thank you john okay perhaps a little bit towards paul pull okay so is it a definite all pull 40 60 yeah thank you 
Yeah, so it's kind of, yeah, so for this, it might be if they need some advice, you might find yourself perhaps giving some suggestions. So perhaps somewhere in that uh, task and people participative zone where we want to pull people along, we want to help them through this, but we might need to be just moving towards that, maybe giving some suggestions, maybe asking them some questions. So kind of a bit like, say, that, that 40, 60. And then the final one is what about an annual appraisal? Where would you put that? If we're still doing annual, I suppose annual reviews is probably a bit more. Uh, some organisations aren't doing appraisals as such in the old fashioned sense. So perhaps a more of an annual review um, with one of you, your with your team members, 50-50. Thank you, John. Yeah. So, yeah, pretty much more around that, you know, it's going to take both. There's going to have to be a certain amount of perhaps telling and, and, and offering guidelines, but also very much around that pull as well and helping people to, you know, maximize their own potential and, and encouraging them and, and empowering them to do to do more for themselves. OK, thank you for that. So really what we're saying here is that there isn't always a a one style to managing and leading. And um, it's very much around, you know, it's situational. It depends on the occasion and it's about whether we choose the right behavior. Um, for that moment. Um, but what we're going to do now is perhaps look a bit more in that coaching space and having what we call um, a balanced conversation. Um, and so we've come up with a, a, a model called CODE. And this CODE model helps us to have a balanced conversation. And so what we're looking at here is when you're sitting down having a coaching conversation, this gives you a sort of framework that you can work with. So we're going to start with connect. So the first thing that we would do is start to connect with the person. Uh, so show, showing some empathy, getting to know them on a, a human level. So building that rapport, getting to know somebody. Then we might talk about exploit topics. So what is it that they want to talk about? Is it something around their behavior? What impact is it having? And um, what do they want to work on? So explore some topics that are key to them. Then we might move into this whole bit around the organizing, looking at their options. So helping people to think through their ideas, helping them to think about some, getting some clarity around what they want to improve and where they actually can make a difference. What is it, what's gonna be a priority for them? And then finally, we get into the drive, which is more about them taking responsibility and moving forward. So what are they actually going to do? Um, and what are they trying to achieve and getting that kind of commitment? The key principle here is, you know, is not trying to just fix things for people. One of the gift is, one of the, sorry, one of the uh, most valuable gifts you can give someone is that time and just that um, time to listen to somebody and hear what they, um, you know, hear what their issues are, their challenges. Um, and then start to coach them and get, you know, using some great questions to try and help them figure it out for themselves. So as managers, though, we're always trying to perhaps go in there, give advice, try to fix things for others. So we're just going to reflect on that a little bit more, talk about coaching um, and sort of the questions we can use to help them to find their own solutions. And then we're going to go into something called intent based leadership. Um, but just thinking about coaching, so coaching, I'm sure most of you have uh, seen a similar quote or uh, have come across this before, but coaching is actually unlocking a person's potential so they can maximize their own performance. It's about helping them to learn rather than teaching them, or in that case, giving advice and, and trying to fix it for somebody. And our balanced conversation uh, model really splits into two. And it's about really what we talk about here is awareness and responsibility. And the fact that really until people are aware of what's going on, um, then they're not really going to be able to take responsibility to make that change. So we're just going to show you a few questions that work really well and um, to get you through um, a balanced conversation very, very quickly. And quite often coaching conversations, as we know, don't have to be, you know, an hour long, don't even have to be half an hour long. Quite often we can have a, you know, a, a chat at the coffee machine. We can just have a quick coaching conversation with somebody um, in, you know, five, 10 minutes. And just to demonstrate that, we're going to give you some questions that you could use. And the connect question is firstly, just simply ask somebody, say, hey, what's on your mind? 
and then go to explore a little bit more. So, yeah, so what else? And, you know, and we could ask that three times to really get them to explore and delve deeper into what's really going on. So what else is going on? Uh, or maybe, and is there anything else? And, is, and anything else? And what we're trying to do here is really get into what is going on. What's it, because sometimes what people think is on their mind um, there is certainly something on their mind, but there could be other things, other layers underneath there that we need to get to the root of. Once we've got to that bit, then we could go, OK, so let's start to think about what we can work on here. So what's the real challenge here for you? Or maybe what's in your control that is a real challenge for you? Let's, because we can't deal with everything at once. So let's try and sort out what is the real issue that they want to focus on. And then finally, with the with the drive bit is OK. So what are you willing to commit to and by when? So what is that one challenge you're willing to commit to change um, and by when? So what we've done is we have put together um, a series of questions which you can download from the chat box. Now, I know they're put in there earlier. Um, or I'll show you them, I'll put them on the screen in a moment, but basically these are the questions. Um, so download those if you can, or um, I'll show you them in the chat box, sorry, I'll show you them on the screen in a moment and you can take a photograph of them. And then what we're going to do, we're going to pop you into um, rooms again, just put you in there, I'll put, eight, I'll put you in for about eight minutes, so you've got four minutes each, and we just want you to practice these using these four key questions. Um, and see how far you get, all right? So you've got four minutes each. So these are the questions. So you could take a picture of those or download them from the chat box. And all I want you to do firstly is ask those key questions in bold, which what's on your mind? What else? What else? Anything else? What's the key challenge? And what are you willing to commit to by when? And see what comes out and how quickly you can, you can uh, do that, okay? So what I'm going to do is just pop you in your rooms in a moment and then um, just give you, say, eight minutes and we'll bring you back in. OK, so. OK, so some people may need to just move. OK, all right. So see you shortly. So again, hope you all found that pretty useful, you know, giving you just time to practice, feel a bit more comfortable asking some of these sort of simple questions and just keeping the flow of the conversation going. And again, you know, Anne and I would just encourage you to, you know, uh, find sort of your, your own uh, path in this and find your own way of sort of doing things. And but, you know, to finish this section on coaching, we just wanted to share this sort of little quote with you, um, you know, and that's we just encourage you to focus on maybe one or two actions on the back of each coaching session, because quite often we overwhelm people with lots of different actions. You know, we try and pick up 20 things that all move pretty slowly. Whereas if we can just get one or two things moving a bit quicker, then we've got a much better chance of showing some immediate improvement and also celebrating some wins a little bit faster. We're now gonna look at the next of our three hats, and this is about leading. And so we're going to introduce you to this concept of intent-based leadership. And this is just a great model. It's a fantastic sort of way of supporting your people um, as you move through this sort of coaching continuum towards that more hands-off approach. Um, and there's a guy here, Captain David Marquet, a famous sort of submarine captain. But he talks about the ability to ask really powerful questions, you know, to listen to your audience, to elicit the skills and creativity that you know your people already possess. And intent-based leadership touches on empowerment and delegation and autonomy. Now, Anne and I, we often find that people and organizations fail to deploy this approach effectively, as the belief almost is, once I've told you that you can be uh, empowered and I've told you you've got autonomy, then that should be it, and that you just can make decisions and you can just do things differently. And of course, we know that's not always the case. People need to understand uh, exactly what to do and how to do it in order to feel like they're able to be empowered. And so Marquet demonstrates this in this little sort of uh, 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 picture here, where that if you want to gain control of a certain situation, then you need to provide the individual with the clarity and the competence to do so. And um, so the individual uh, grows in clarity, the growing competency, the more control, the more empowered they're going to feel. 
But let's just take a little uh, look at this next little video, just to give us an illustration of where we can get started on this sort of ladder of intent-based leadership. One of our main tools is the ladder of leadership. The ladder of leadership is a language-based approach to empowerment. It's the way we can incrementally, in small steps, give people the words so that they'll feel like they have more authority. At the bottom of the ladder of leadership, we have the traditional tell me what to do relationship where the boss tells people what to do. In other words, the boss is leaning into their directs, the boss is directing, and they're reporting back. And what we say is you want to level up people. You want to invite them to the next level. So instead of telling them what to do, when they come to you with a problem and you have that impulse, oh, I know the answer, let me tell you what to do, you resist the impulse to tell them what to do and instead you invite them to what do you see. The very first step off of tell me what to do is observation and description without judgment. Observation and description occurs in a part of the brain that is not connected to emotions and therefore it feels safe. Hey, I'm just telling you what I see. So for example, on the submarine, it might be, hey, uh, we got a problem with the pump. What should we do? Well, tell me more about that. Uh, I can feel it vibrating in the, in the deck and it's shaking a little bit on the foundation. Okay. Then we invite them, what do you think? What's going on? Hey, what do you think's happening? Well, I think the bearings are going bad. And then the next step up is, what do you think we should do? That's a recommendation. And then the next step up is, what do you intend to do? Now here's where we shift initiative and ownership has shifted squarely onto the shoulders of the subordinate. And as a boss, we've now become a leader where we've leaned back gradually, incrementally, small steps which made it safe and the team member has leaned now leaning into us, telling us what they think and what they think should happen and what they intend to do unless we stop them. And it's very powerful. So the ladder of leadership is the way we translated this fuzzy notion of empowerment into very specific language cues that we could listen to as leaders and that we could use as followers in order to step ourselves up the empowerment and the engagement ladder. Sure, you're on mute. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, I just said I love these sort of videos, these sort of little cartoon. Uh, drawn videos that you can search for them online David Marquet there's, there's plenty of them uh, and you know as the video before about the nail sort of said you know Marquet talks about this resistance to try and uh, uh, resist the temptation I should say to try and give people an actual answer you know just give me the context the rationale and tell me what you intend to do and I'll, I'll, I'll help you uh, by validating that maybe asking some questions and so we know it's not easy, though, to jump straight to a place of feeling like an intent based leader and, and actually thinking uh, about being intent based. And so this little ladder is a great way of, of just building up to that. And, and each step on this ladder helps you to build both confidence and trust, not just in yourself, but in the person that you're coaching. So, you know, typically you'll start at that bottom phase where you're telling people what to do. They're just happy to be told what to do. But just some really simple questions around, you know, what do you see or what do you think? It, it keeps the individual thinking more about the situation they're in. It, it helps them to try and unlock some of the, the potential solutions without you having to give them to them. Because everyone can see what's around. Them. Everyone can, you know, share what they think about a situation uh, uh, that they're in. And then gradually as that builds and they get a bit more confident, they can see uh, a bit more of the direction that, that you're providing them then you can look at, okay, so what, what do you like to do about this? You know, what, what do you intend to do? And so these steps are a great incremental way of just creating this more intent-based leadership. So you give them a, a start from the sort of bottom of this and, and gradually build up to the point where you'll find that you're able to uh, not only have a, a much richer 
conversation, but actually the individual themselves will start to come to you with more of an answer, more of a solution, because they'll have already thought through some of the answers to these questions, knowing that you're going to ask them. So there's a certain consistency around the way you approach this that will help this uh, to grow. So we're going to just sort of have a bit of a conversation. We're conscious there's a few people dropped out. So rather than send you off into uh, a, another sort of set of Zoom rooms, we're just going to open the mics a little bit and just get you to share some of your thoughts uh, with us directly. And so we just put some questions on screen now just to prompt some thinking around intent-based leadership. But ultimately, we just want to know a little bit more about where might this be playing out for you? you know, where might this be useful to get your people, your teams to be a bit more uh, intent uh, based. So, you know, what's the usual approach that you take? What language do you hear people using? And so if you wouldn't mind just opening up your mic, just sharing some views on, on this, where do you think this might be useful for you? Any sort of views on this at all? Everyone's gone quiet. <laughs> maybe they just on mute like I was on. Maybe that's the, yeah, that's it. This, or the reading, thinking. Maybe that's what it is. Yeah, I think it's certainly at the moment when uh, you know we're going through this change and people coming back into the workplace or the hybrid working that we're going into. I think this is going to be probably where people are looking for leaders to almost tell them what to do but you know as, as leaders I think it's so important that we you know start to get people thinking for themselves and about what they would want to do you know and what they intend to do and I know we use this in Korean a lot don't we and it's really powerful but it does take time doesn't it to to yeah. get people into that habit yeah it does Pam pa, I don't know if you've come off mute I don't know if that's to to, to speak or <laughs> he's Watching far too closely. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was just going to say similar really to what Anne had said that I think when your team, if your team come to you, they usually come with that kind of what do I do or this this has happened or this opportunity is there. What do I, you know, what do you think? And it's very easy to go, oh, well, try this or blah, blah, blah. And it is about taking that step and, and going, well, what do you think you should do? Or what would be your next steps? Or talk me through what you think. Um, it, as a parent, I think it's a bit like parenting. Mm. And, and <laughs> taking that, because that's what you do with your kids, isn't it? You, you kind of kind of try and give them the, the responsibility. And it, it's being able to do that within a workplace environment as well. It's just the same process, just a different situation. Yeah. A very good point right so what we sometimes call pam is the advice monster right and how do we it's like changing that habit and uh, quite often the advice monster comes out and you just want to tell them what to do because you think you've got all the, the best advice in the world so the way your kids are concerned but uh, yeah. it can backfire right <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but do, do give this a go you know start start with some of those simple uh you know more easier questions and just you know, get your teams thinking about uh, some of the things that they would do. I, I just typically find that 80% you know, of the time, people know the right answer. They're just looking to you for a bit of validation, a bit of confidence boosting that they're on the right track. And more often than not, they probably are you know, because they're typically the experts in their field and good at what they do. So we'll make sure that you get a copy of the intent-based um, ladder uh, as part of this um, so that you can uh, see the questions. Again, if you want to search for David Marquet, uh, then uh, you will see some of those little videos. Now, to finish with, we, we talked a little bit about these three hats. You know, we covered two of them already in coaching and leading. And hopefully some of the tools that we provide, some of the guides that are there will just help you to move up and down this coaching continuum at your sort of uh, leisure. And, and do practice them, you know, make them a bit of your, uh, a bit authentic so that they, they, they feel more like you and, and so that you can have uh, better conversations. Um, now, we're just going to show you a quick uh, clip of uh, uh, that relates to the third hat, which is uh, manager. Um, and here's something that we've, been, we've seen in one of our other clients. I asked Reebok to send us Terry Tate. Some people thought we were crazy. 
but I'm a firm believer in paradigm breaking, outside the box thinking. Hey, buddy. Break was over 15 minutes ago, Mitch! And since Terry's been with us, our productivity has gone up 46%. <laughs> We're getting more from our employees than ever before. You know you need a cover sheet on your TPS reports, Richard! That ain't new, baby! Hey, Terry. Hey, Janice! <laughs> But what's really impressed me is how Terry's become part of the Felcher family. <laughs> he fits right in here. That's a long distance call, Doug. To be honest, I wish Reebok sent us ten Terry Tates. <laughs> you wanna play game scene? Well, when it's game time, it's pay time, baby. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Reebok to send us Terry Tate. So, look, of course, it's just a bit of fun. We know that in terms of managers uh, and the way people manage, it's often you have your own policies, guidelines, procedures. And so it would be uh, remiss of us to try and talk about that in a, a workshop such as this. But hopefully, you know, from the last sort of uh, 60, 70, nearly 80 minutes now, <laughs> you know, we've talked and covered some topics that will help you to just have more balanced conversations, you know, help you to lead through uh, growth uh, in your organization or even to consolidate sort of on return from uh, the, the last 12 months of the pandemic. And so we've covered the three hats, you know, when to lead, manage, coach, uh, where you're spending most of your time, uh, this balance of, of, of conversation, you know, how you can reflect on uh, the various different aspects of a great conversation, some little coaching techniques specifically around increasing awareness and responsibility. And then, you know, that topic of intent-based leadership. So, um, Thank you so much for your uh, sort of time, for sticking out uh, that sort of period with us and getting involved in the various different sessions. You certainly worked harder on yourself in the last uh, 70 minutes or so. And uh, yeah, we'll hand back to Emily to close the session. Thank you. I just want to say uh, a huge thank you to, to Stuart and to Anne for, for leading today's session and to all of you who participated um, for doing so. If I could... Uh, just also thank our headline sponsors, sorry. Um, but I did also just to thank our headline sponsors, Aston University, BMET and University of Work, Birmingham's Work Inclusivity Research Centre, um, without whom growth people would be possible as well. Um, can I just the next slide, please? Mm -hmm. So I mentioned that today is our final Growth Through People webinar, um, but the, conference, uh, the campaign fully ends with our Growth Through People conference next week. Um, on Tuesday the 30th of March. We've got some fantastic speakers lined up. Our keynote speakers will be Baroness Ruby Madredda Smith, who's president of the British Chamber of Commerce. Um, she used to be a CEO, I believe the first female CEO of a, a FTSE 250 company and a member of the House of Lords. Um, and Jess Phillips, who of course is a local um, MP, Labour MP, um, and a two-time best-selling author. Um, and Stuart Bailey will also be speaking at the conference doing a final wrap-up session on uh, what you've taken away from the day and what you'll implement differently in your business going forward. Um, so that's really, really exciting. We're very much looking forward to it. It's free for anyone to attend. My colleague Vanessa will be sending um, details out after this event, including the details for this conference. So if you are interested, please do register to attend. Um, next slide, please. Just to also note, I know I mentioned it at the very start of the um, session, but if you can spare five minutes to please complete our post-event survey, it would be hugely appreciated. Um, it feeds into annual research we do into leadership and people management skills. And obviously after the, all the change of the past year um, and the change that we're still in the midst of in many respects, um, it's hugely important this year more than ever. Um, and it feeds into our conversations with stakeholders on this agenda. So thank you ever so much. Um, then final slide is just to say um, thank you again. Thank you for joining us. And thank you to Anne and Stuart for leading a fantastic session. Thank you. It's been great. Thank you very much. Okay. Take care.